that Spain did recently was they said, well, um, no cash transactions over $2,500 because they want to track everything. Mm -hmm. And so there's just all kinds of crazy tricks. Probably a lot of you know more about that than I do, about some of the tricks that they, they pull to try and clamp down. Germany, during World War II, made it, you couldn't send money out, and if they caught you doing it, it was an act of treason. Wow. And they were yeah, like, it doesn't surprise me. jail or killing them or mm -hmm. something bad. They, they read their Roman history. <laughs> but um, this is after they got their guns, of course. Yeah. And that's true, too. That happens in a lot of different places. The same with Mao, same with Joe Stalin. Yep. All the same, same thing. Oh, Obama. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, one, the interesting thing that I've been hearing, hearing, I'm sure a lot of you have heard, is that they, they're talking about now regulating uh, ammunition with the EPA because, well, we can't have lead in our soil. You know, that's, that's going to destroy the environment. So they find little backdoor ways to mm -hmm. regulate that. So uh, last slide here. Um, awareness is growing. so. There are more people who do realize at least something is wrong. The Occupy Wall Streeters, for instance, they don't know what's happening, but they know something is wrong. And that's a start. Um, Ron Paul here says there's a rumbling in the heartland. The anger is building. Harnessing that anger and converting it into positive and constructive energy, they have favorable consequences beyond our imagination. It's time to become energized, not despondent over the tragic mess that's been imposed on us. So, you know, it's nice to try and change the policies of the government, but I consider to be far more important to control what you do. To realize that this is all coming down the pike. We don't know when it's going to happen. It could be next week. It could be 10 years from now. But when the reserve currency status goes, we're in big trouble. And you want to have things of real value. Um, you know, uh, it, but I'll leave it up to you to decide what that might be. Um, and on the, la the very last side here, I have um, some, uh, <clears throat> some uh, reading, uh, several books that are really good, uh, including one of them that I uh, mentioned already, This Time is Different. Um, that one is, that book you can read the first chapter and then the last few chapters because first they tell you what they're going to talk about. Then they do all the wonky stuff in the middle with the charts and graphs for, you know, about 250, 300 pages. And then they come to the, all their conclusions. So if you do get that book, you might want to start with reading the beginning and the end. Um, and down here I've got some web resources. Um, here are a couple, if you're wondering about this from an investment angle, here are a couple of newsletters that I really like that are very inexpensive. One is called Outstanding Investments, and the guy, his name is Byron King, and he gets all of this. He knows about all of this. But he's going out and finding resource companies. So for you know a, a certain amount of your money, it might be appropriate to invest in gold mines, phosphate mines, etc. That's the kind of thing that he looks for. Um, and then this last one here is Stansberry Research. And um, the, the, he, he really, really gets this. He knows exactly what's happening, and so he's a good source for that and tries to um, veer around all of these problems and help people make a little bit of money. And Tell us about way. resource investment in the state of Idaho. What's that? <laughs> Tell us about resource investment in this state. You know, Joe probably knows more about that. He knows about a lot of silver mines. and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, there are a number of mines. There are some uh, rare earth element. Uh, Operations mm -hmm. up by uh, lead ore, privately held, that are pretty excited. That's great. I've got a silver mine listed. Yep. There's a great big molybdenum mine that's in the permitting process up at Grimes Summit. Near Idaho City, right? Uh, north of, of, of Centerville. Oh, Centerville. About okay. seven or eight miles mm -hmm. east of Idaho City and north. It could be one of the biggest in the world. <laughs> They're in the, if they can get all their permits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah the, the, the Chinese are coming in and looking at those as, as uh, outstanding investments also. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, thank you all for coming. That's the end of my presentation. We <laughs> were right here a couple weeks ago on the internet and they were saying that the Chinese uh, are trying real hard 
change the petrodollars from U.S. to the U.N. And yeah. if that happens, then the printing presses will stop. Yeah, and that's that's a really good point that you brought that up. So when I talked about the uh, U.S. reserve, uh, um, the reserve status of the um, U.S. dollar collapsing, one thing that's going on that a lot of people theorize, and in fact the Chinese, they've more than theorized that the Chinese have come out and said they're going to do this, that they want to be the reserve currency, mm -hmm. and they've come out and said that they're going to stop buying our bonds. Of course, that we shouldn't worry about that because Barney Frank. Uh, said in a speech that they're just bluffing, so we don't. Oh, work. So oh, you know, I this is just hearsay. I can sleep better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so they're just bluffing. But but what's going on? It's very interesting. Is they want they said they said they want to be the new reserve currency and replace us, just like you say. But it's interesting how they want to do it. If you remember, we were talking about before 1971, our currency was backed up by gold. And so anybody could cut, well, any country could come in with a stack of dollars and say, you know, you've set the price of gold at this, you know, $35, whatever it was. Um, and I want my gold for these $3,500. I want 100 ounces of gold. And they would actually do it. Um, and so it used to be convertible. Well, the, the theory is that the Chinese are trying to do the same thing now that since we've gone away from that and now people are being ripped off everywhere that use dollars and they're getting sick of it, the Chinese are they're not only the number one gold producer in the world, they have they produce more gold than any other country in the world. They also are importing more gold than anyone else in the world. And so a lot of people are like, well what does this mean? You know, what why are they doing it? Why do they need all this gold? What could they possibly do with all this gold? And, and the theory is that they're going to do exactly what they said they're going to do. <laughs> that they're going to use this gold to say, all right, you know, um, the uh, one ounce of gold is equal X number of Chinese won. Anybody who wants to convert it, you, you use ours for international transaction, mm -hmm. our currency. Anybody who wants to convert it, you're welcome to it. Here's your gold. Mm -hmm. And that's what we used to do. When paper money started, um, paper money would say either silver certificate on it, or it would say um, gold certificate. And that's how they got people to accept gold, uh, so, uh, paper money, because they knew they could walk into any Federal Reserve Bank, and they could exchange it for that equivalent amount of silver or gold, and it was guaranteed. And the Chinese are up to the same thing. I think it was Ron Paul, I'm trying to remember who it was, but I think it was him, talks about Fort Knox. And who has actually seen our gold in Fort Knox has been decades. And he, yeah. he was on the banking committee, and he wanted to go see it, and he wouldn't grant it to him. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Well, in this, pre there. In, in this presentation, I, I think that this information is so important to get to everybody. I've tried to leave out two kinds of things. I've tried to leave out politics, because, you know, I don't want, I want people, to, whether they're on the right or the left, I want them to, to look at this objectively and say, you know, you really need to consider this, whether you're on the left or the right. The other thing I've tried to leave out is anything that people might construe as a conspiracy theory. And what you're saying may be true. The gold might not be there. Nobody knows. It hasn't been um, audited since the 50s, I think. Seen. Yeah, and so there's lots of different theories running around that it's not all there, it's been lent out, etc. It's filled with tungsten bars, etc., etc. Well, today, Germany is following that same lead. Yeah, Germany, oh, yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah, they asked to see it in the Fed told them, or the uh, well, yeah. said, no. National Security. <laughs> isn't that it? That was a very interesting story, yeah. and, and they're not giving up on that either. So what he's talking about is recently the Germans are getting very nervous about their gold reserves. They have, I think it's the second largest gold reserves in the world, or third? Second. Second, okay. <laughs> and, um, and ever since the Cold War, they've stored most of their gold uh, overseas. They've stored some in England, some at the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank, etc. And they've done it because in case of a Soviet invasion, then they can get all their gold. Okay, fine. Well, there's no more Soviet Union right now. I don't think Russia's ready to invade them. And now they want their gold back. And the Fed basically is telling them to take a hike. Possession is nine-tenths of the gold. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> so that, that's really interesting.
when you talk about the, the dollar being tied to the gold standard, uh, mm -hmm. but actually it's tied to the oil standard because mm -hmm. all oil is, is bought by U.S. dollars. Sure. Yeah. And if that That's changes the and there is, is a movement afoot to change that from the dollar, then so there's nothing bolstering our, our dollar. It was, called a, um, it was called a gold dinar, the, the Middle East countries, isn't that what they were calling it? So I know Libya before we uh, <coughs> helped uh, get rid of Gaddafi. Yeah, Gaddafi was trying to. Institute. Gaddafi was trying to institute this, and suddenly he was deposed. Gaddafi, Saddam, Saddam, Mubarak, all of them. Mm -hmm. They all had lots of gold. This and, was a And they were gold. they were starting to talk about this gold. Mm -hmm. yeah, they've been doing it for years. And replace dollars, just like you're saying. And suddenly they're all out of power. I wonder how mm -hmm. that happened. And um, so, but these things, you know, some people could construe them as being, you know, conspiracy theories or whatnot. Um, you know, all of this is true even without that. But, but you could, you know, that could be, there could be a lot to that. And, um, and just think what would happen if all of a sudden trillions of dollars were freed up because we don't trade oil in dollars anymore. It would be a big, big problem for us. I'm just going to say that <clears throat> regarding the world reserve currency, which is the dollar, um, there's a great book. I haven't read it, but I've heard the interviews, and that's John Perkins called Confessions of an Economic oh, History. Yep, I've got it. And you have to understand mm -hmm. that to understand the world reserve currency, hmm. because behind the world reserve currency is the barrel of a gun. It's imposed by coercion. Hmm. And if you defy it, like Iraq or Chile or Argentina or Iran, you're going to face a, a revolution. Oh, interesting. I think there's two fronts. I mean, I think there's that. But there is also a traditional accepted standard. Uh, if, you, if you look back at where Ron Paul, for example, has failed the most on uh, economic predictions, is things never go um, as uh, bad as fast as he uh, thinks they would. And that's the because... The government still has a lot of power. They have a lot of strings to pull. It's because there's a, there's a ton of clout, and there's also a ton of of uh, procedure. There's a ton of tradition. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't uncouple quickly. Yeah. Uh, it's more, if, if, if everything was really as uh, mm -hmm. agile as people like to think that it is, mm -hmm. things would have tanked decades ago. Yeah. But things aren't that agile. It's a big uh, moving ship. Because we saw the loan profile of the United States. It makes no sense. Why would anybody loan us money anymore? It yeah. just doesn't make sense, but like you're saying, I mean, it's like a normalcy bias. Jen was talking about this once, normalcy bias. <coughs> People are just used to things staying about the same, mm -hmm. and they can't conceive of a world without the dollar being the center of it. Yeah. Then that'll just keep, that'll go for longer than, than you'll imagine. The downside of that is, is that it will go further and further out from the coast, too. Yeah, so we'll dig a deeper is, hole. That is, the, that is the flip side of it. So where's accountability in the government? If it's illegal for our government to buy 61% of, it, of its own debt back, and the Federal Reserve bankers are <coughs> with trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, where is accountability in either they're not the, they're, they're not violating the law, because the Federal Reserve isn't buying it from the Treasury. They're buying it from the banks that are buying it from the Treasury. And so the way the law was written, it doesn't apply to them, which is just crazy. Saying, but that's the way we do it. And in fact, it was um, it, it, you come up. There are different estimates for how many, what percent of Treasury bills and notes end up at the Federal Reserve, because you have to follow this trail. And um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think who it was. The Bill Gross, the Bond King. He thought that it was one year. He thought it was closer to 80 percent. 61 percent is a low estimate. But that's what the mainstream media is saying, so we'll just say 61%. But uh, Bill Gross um, uh, thinks that it's closer to 80. And so it's hard. That's the other reason why they do it the way they do. So it's hard to track. It's not a direct thing. So, yeah, accountability. If we had accountability, we'd be stimulating the economy, the economy by building prisons for all these people. <laughs> but um, the finance, seriously though, the financial crisis, how many people went to jail? No one. Nobody. Oh. Madoff, well. Madoff had nothing to do with it. Nobody's gone to jail. The savings and loan crisis years ago, lots of people went to jail. 
they, there were a lot of orange jumpsuits, but now nobody's going to jail. There's so no accountability. how do we get them in jail? That's a good question. <laughs> I'm not sure. I how wish do we get them that. to stop embezzling any more money from us? I mean, we're already at how many hundreds of trillions of dollars? How do we stop them from Educate. Educate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The reason we're all here today. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're, yeah. the, you know, stupid people that you keep taking over work. This country is really, I mean, come on, you've got a six pack in your refrigerator, right? mm -hmm. something on TV, you're half a camper, right? Yeah. So we've got to educate people, uh, forget about that six pack of Well, you've got to TV. find the politicians, the Justin Amashes, and these, these, these young politicians who get it, and they need our help. We've got to find the right people and get behind them. Mm -hmm. But you, got, you have to think about what you personally are going to do. You know, Lisa, one thing about the politicians, when the good ones don't make it, sometimes the people that were supporting them evaporate. Mm -hmm. It's the wrong time to evaporate Absolutely. because mm -hmm. the legislature meets in just uh, another month, and uh, you you have to start informing them also. And not all legislators like to be informed. <laughs> so it's the ones you have to pick and choose the ones that you really can communicate with, mm -hmm. and they. The small ones, the humble ones, they're the ones that really carry the ball for you. Mm -hmm. And what, what, um,